Okay. Um, like Kat said, I'm Brandon Stump. You probably recognize me from other hit debates that you've watched on this uh, local cable stuff. <laughs> and so I, I'll do autographs and stuff afterwards. Um, what we do is, normally I take the opening statement and I do it in one direction. And then I do the closing one in the opposite direction. And other than that, I pick the order of the questions. I don't write the questions. You write the questions. So if the candidates don't like the question, they're there. And um, other than that, we try to make this as fun as possible because I realize it's a, it's a forum and a debate and these things can be tedious. But we normally have a good time. And so what I'm going to do today is for opening, we are going to start from this end of the table. And that means we will be starting with Nan Kermuller and working our way down. If everyone, please, you know, say your name so that it gets picked up in case they can't see your name tag when they watch this online. And then he has the time and we'll go from there. Okay. Hello. My name is Nan Kermuller. I am proud to be a part of this district. In the last year, there have been a lot of positive changes that are in line with our strategic plan. A strategic plan that was built with hundreds of people from our community coming together and having hard conversations describing their personal vision for our school district. These are conversations that we're still having. I remember my first conversation about the Ferndale Public Schools back in the fall of 2007. Just after our family moved here from Chicago with a first grader and a preschool student. We came for the diversity and the progressive values, but also for the passion and the volunteer spirit that thrives here. We knew that this was the right district when we met with the principal of Roosevelt and had the opportunity to experience what Ferndale Schools had to offer. Now we have students in Grant, Coolidge, and Ferndale Middle School, and we continue to sing the praises of our great district. We all know that the Ferndale School communities of Ferndale, Royal Oak Township, Oak Park, and Pleasant Ridge are special places. We support our schools and work hard to move them forward. We are working towards our schools being more progressive and in line with the things expressed at the community forums. Keeping the conversation going is something I promise to do. By finally letting our communities into the decision-making process, we are making gains. Our community is realizing that we're on the rise. Great things are happening. And with that, it is vitally important to stay on top of this and not become complacent. When I was first elected to the board, I believed accountability was simply asking difficult questions at the table and holding the superintendent accountable. After spending years on the board, I see accountability as much more complicated. Involving the ability to communicate with our community and developing appropriate multi-level evaluations of our districts from finances to operations to full-scale evaluations of the job our superintendent is doing. The team that we currently have on the board has done an outstanding job in the last two years focusing on that accountability, transparency, and ensuring that we have the policies that drive effective oversight. Running with Judd and Karen is a pleasure. We each think in unique ways, and yet we can work together as a team respectfully. Listening to the opposing opinions, there is a high level of respect. This entire board works well together. We have our areas we excel at, and we are high hardworking and mindful of the task we have been given by the people that we serve. As a voter in the Ferndale School community, you can feel safe knowing that a vote for Jen, Karen, and Nan this November is a vote for keeping Ferndale Schools on the rise. We now move to Keith Warnick. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, thanks to CFF for allowing us this time. My name is Keith Warnick. I'll uh, start out by saying that I have an awful lot to talk about, but you can see an awful lot of information about me on my website, which is keithwarnick.com. Beyond that, I want to talk about the 25 plus years of uh, lobbying I've done directly and indirectly for Ferndale Schools. Started when my kids were in elementary school at Jackson, which is now CASA. And I was asked to talk to the school board about not uh, not changing the uh, or what we call a national recognized foreign language K-12 foreign language program. And then I was asked to step in front of the school board again a few years later, talk to them about uh, cutting back on our elementary 
school music program. In 1998, as PTA council president, I assigned a uh, legislative liaison to our PTA board, which we didn't have before. And in 2000, uh, as a past president of the PTA council, uh, we partnered with the MEA Uniserve director and effectively squashed the DeVos-led voucher campaign here in Ferndale by a vote of 80% against the 20% for. In the early 2000s, as a PTA past president, I was asked by Governor Granholm to submit a request for resolution from the school board to support using our tobacco settlement money for scholarships for our seniors going on to college, $4,000 scholarships. And in 2001, I was asked to join the Michigan State PTSA Board of Managers. Uh, that put me into areas like the Governor's Education Summit, state and national conferences, and I helped make Ferndale relevant across the state by telling them what good stuff we were doing locally. As a board member elected in 2004, which apparently was the first year of the CFF forums, um, I was asked to join the Oakland County School Board Association Legislative Committee. I went to those every one of those meetings for the next four years. Everybody else in the county was complaining about cutbacks, <laughs> uh, budget deficits, and we were talking about adding money to our fund balance on a yearly basis. And then I went to the uh, National School Board Association Federal Relations Network Conference starting in 2005 in Washington, D.C. Did that for six straight years for the school district, lobbying for equitable funding for schools across the country and reauthorization of No Child Left Behind. And in 2009, I pushed our school board to submit um, the information regarding our university high school um, to the um, American School Board Journal Manual Awards. And that school, for its innovative education of <coughs> urban students, won first place. Uh, and I went to Chicago to accept that award. I'll get the rest of them at the end of the program. Thank you. Okay, and next we move to Karen Toomey. Good afternoon. I am Karen Toomey, a teacher, proud parent of three children in the Ferndale Public Schools. And I have been on the board since 2009 and currently am serving as your secretary. I would first like to thank Citizens for Fair Ferndale for hosting and the library for providing us this wonderful space. I especially want to thank everyone here for your continued engagement in our schools for the sake of our children and community. When I moved into this community almost 20 years ago with my husband sitting back there, it was love at first sight. I was blown away by the progressive energy of the people. There was a sense of community I had never before encountered. Every snowstorm, power outage, street fair, and block party brought us closer. This is a town where if you ask for help, you get so much more than a referral card. People roll up their sleeves and they come racing over. Ferndale is more than our city, it is our home and our extended family. It was six years ago that some community members approached me about running for the board, some in this very room. We began to talk about how unstoppable our schools would be if they were more reflective of our amazingly energetic, inclusive, and progressive community. Upon joining the board, I began building networks and educating myself, attending workshops through the Michigan Association of School Boards that led to a Distinguished Achievement Award. I continued on in this pursuit by attaining a master's degree in school administration and leadership. This training made me focus on the primary board functions of visioning and policy making. Unfortunately, my early attempts to engage were answered with a 10-year-old strategic plan and a copy of the mission statement pasted inside my name placard. Boards need to lead through constant review of vision and policy. Thanks to the advocacy of this community and my current board colleagues, we were finally able to initiate a strategic planning process just prior to the last election. As chair of the strategic planning committee, I was able to apply my experience and training in framing an inclusive process that welcomed the input of hundreds of community members. My experience again paid off, literally, when as chair of the external relations committee, I provided the leadership for an advocacy trip to Lansing that helped return over a half million dollars to our district. The examples of success through applied experience are numerous. 
I can see the positive results of proactive, collaborative, policy-driven leadership. This amazing community has put together an effective team of board members, including Nan and Jen, who have deep and diverse talents, and I want to keep this successful team together. I want to continue using my experience on the board to work for transparency, achievement, and sustainability of our district. I am now confident that the schools can be more than reflective of the awesome qualities of this community. They can be a source of pride. And lastly, we have Jennifer Latosh. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jennifer Latosh, and first I want to thank Citizens for a Fair Ferndale for hosting today, and I want to thank all of you for spending your afternoon with us. I thought I would start by telling you all why I'm running for the school board. I grew up in Oakland County, and I started in public schools in kindergarten. When I was almost in middle school, my mom came to me and my brother and said that we had a decision to make. She said that she wasn't happy with the direction of our schools, and that either she could run for a seat on the school board, which would require the commitment of the whole family, or my brother and I could go to Catholic school. On that day, I became my mom's number one campaign volunteer. <laughs> I'm proud to say that with a lot of hard work, my mom won her first election. And through the election process and her 12 years of board service, I saw her passion and her dedication for public education change our schools, change I could see as a student. Flash forward to 1995, when my wife and I moved to Ferndale and bought our first house. When we first started our family, it was imperative for us to live in a community that was open, diverse, and supportive of all families. We wanted our kids to be proud to say, I have two moms. And Ferndale is clearly that community. But it was also just as important for our kids to have access to the best education possible. And this is a bit harder to figure out. I'm a family law attorney. I'm not an educator. And over the years, I saw families move out of the district and neighborhood kids go off to Berkeley or private schools. But I also heard from friends and neighbors some wonderful things about our schools. So we enrolled our kids in kindergarten and decided to see how it would go. Over the past four years that our kids have been in the Ferndale Public Schools, I can honestly say that my concerns have vanished. We have the most amazing teachers and the most amazing schools. But like my mom saw so many years ago, I see that our, needs, our, our schools need some work and they need some help. And just like she helped create the school district that she expected, I want to help create and maintain the district that I expect for my kids and that we expect for all of our kids. I realize that I have the skills and the voice that can help move our schools forward. So after my involvement on the Strategic Planning Committee, I had a conversation with my own family, very similar to the one my mom had with me so many years ago. And this January, I was truly humbled to be appointed to the school board. It has been a long 10 months. But in that time, I drafted the new superintendent contract that requires local focus and eliminated conflicts of interest. I was able to share my unique skills to complement the skills of Nan and Karen and the other members of our current school board and the hiring of our new superintendent and streamlining that process while keeping true to the goals and vision in our strategic plan. And I was able to assist through some extremely difficult times, only to put us in a solid and progressive position that we're in today. The energy in our community is building. The excitement is growing as we work to raise up our schools. This is a crucial time in our district. We have a community-driven strategic plan, a new dynamic superintendent, and seven school board members who are passionate and dedicated. I'm asking for your vote on November 4th so we can continue our forward momentum. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now here's how we're going to move forward. Brace yourself. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick, I'm going to randomly select who gets the, to answer the question first. Then after that, we will move down to the right. So if I were to pick you, the next time it would go to you. Everyone got me? Your right, not their right. My right. And then maybe later I'll mix it up, but I can't let you know now. All right. So I'll pick one of you, and I'll keep you on track because I'll say your name, so really you have no reason to not know what's going to happen. Okay. So our first question is going to go to Karen Toomey. How do you plan or propose to work with the State Board of Education and State Legislature? Wow. That seems to be about my favorite topic. <laughs> you know, um, as chair of the External Relations Committee, I was um, blessed with the confidence of the rest of the board and the community to start bridging some of those communication lines. And I'm quite actively out there having those conversations. Currently, some of you may have seen me on the news recently for the EAA letter that I received. Well, that started a conversation that further propelled my involvement with other neighboring networks. So actually, just on Thursday night, 
I was on a panel for educational experts, and we were speaking with Senator Burt Johnson, and um, a man named Shower was there, along with somebody named Conyers and some others who were really spearheading this. And also, I was able to spend some time with Cassandra Ulbrich. So I think what we have now set up is a very rapid form of communication that occurs from the classroom up to the policymakers, and that's so important as we consider things such as what is the true impact of Common Core on our children in the classroom? What is the true impact of these early warning systems that are being proposed? What is going to be the impact of nutrition programs or anything else? So I think that what we have been doing is really working to rapidly um, improve those communication lines and speak more to our teachers. I see a teacher out there who I was just speaking with yesterday so that we can make everybody who is a part of these decisions more knowledgeable as fast as possible. Thank you. Jennifer Latosh, same question. Great, thank you. Um, I believe it was about three weeks after I was first elected on, or appointed, I'm sorry, appointed onto the board when I um, was there in January that I was able to join uh, Karen and so many others of our, from our board and from our community and from our staff on that advocacy trip to Lansing. And it is absolutely imperative that we work collaborative, collaboratively at, at the state level with the state legislature, with the governor's office, um, with the county level, with the inner, inner city district schools, and we work collaboratively at the local level with the, all of it, uh, the city council for Ferndale, Royal Oak Township, Pleasant Ridge, and Oak Park. We need to work with everybody. We have worked closely with the mayors of all those towns, and we've worked closely with the city commissions and the city councils from all those, all those towns to work together to actually have a united voice when we go up to Lansing. And that's exactly what we did in January. And with the help from Karen and her direction and her leadership in that area, we were able to make significant and long-standing change for our district by taking our entire community up to Lansing. We're a small town, but we have a big voice when we want to. So when we all work together, when we all pull together our resources, we're able to take, take that move up there and bring back the resources that we need for our kids and our schools. When we bring that back those resources, we bring back those finances that brings up our enroll enrollment, and then that, in fact, brings up our achievement. It's all tied together. So when we work together, we can bring all those things together. Thank you. Thank you. Nan Kermuler. I'm actually extremely proud <coughs> of the work that our current board has done, um, not only in involving our public, in the work that we're doing at the legislative level, at the state level, at the city level, um, this is a huge problem. And it's, it's not just going to be the board that can make this change, but it starts with the board creating and developing relationships with other people where, as a group, we can start to affect better change. We need to stay on top of what is happening legislatively. Our funding is being constantly cut. All, all cities are experiencing the crisis that we are experiencing, working with less, but having more and more put upon us. More and more mandates put upon our teachers and told them, do all these extra things, but I'm not giving you anything extra to do it with. It's unacceptable. And it's a lot of work. But this is what we signed up for. Staying on top of this is huge, and it's very important. And the thing that uh, both Jen and Karen and I have talked about many times is that we are so lucky that our community is engaged. We are politically motivated. We are ready to step up. Over 100 people went up to Lansing. I mean, this is, these are big things, and I'm really proud to be a part of this community. And I'm super proud of all the work that Karen has done. She is a tireless advocate. She is always putting herself out there, networking to make sure that we have current information. And she does this in a way with intelligence, kindness, patience, where other people feel included in the process and they are willing to put in the work to help us accomplish our goals. Thank you. Keith Warren. Well, when I was elected in 2004 to the board, I brought legislative activity to Ferndale Public Schools Board of Education through my uh, our connections through with Gilda Jacobs when uh, we worked together in the anti-voucher campaign in 2000, and Paul Candino, who uh, who served the area that covers our little portion of 
uh, Charter Township of Royal Oak and then Andy Meisner, all the way up to Vincent Gregory and Ellen Lipton now. Uh, they all know me, they've all known me, and I continue to contact them as needed. Uh, and then continuing on through my uh, election to the Michigan Association of School Boards uh, Board of Directors, <laughs> that also put us in contact with the Governor's Office, first with uh, Jennifer Granholm and then uh, Governor Snyder. So I've been making those connections for the last uh, at least uh, 15 years, and I continue, even though I'm not on the board now, continue to make connections um, for legislative activity through a variety of channels, whether it's the Michigan Association of School Boards, National School Board Association. I even get email alerts from the Mackinac Center for Public Policy, so I know what the other side is doing. I stay on top of those things, and I continue to stay on top of those things. I brought all that information to every school board meeting that I attended from 2004 through 2012 and got as many people involved as possible. That was something that is uh, kind of built in to my character. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question, we're going to start with Nan, and we're going to work our way down to the right that way. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> Which right? I didn't see that. <laughs> this one. I'll do it slowly. That one. Please describe how you have included the community's voice in decision making during your time on the school board. Oh, this is actually one of my favorite topics. Um, I, when the, the last time that I ran to be on the board, my huge focus was building bridges. Was the the problem that I perceived that we had a whole bunch of islands that were existing within one school district where working together we could accomplish m much more than we could if we had little pockets of volunteers working separately throughout the district. In that time, I've been really proud to be um, a liaison to Royal Oak Township. I'm currently the liaison to Pleasant Ridge. I try to get to as many functions as possible and learn and talk to the people. Um, for me, this, this is where it all lies. I mean, if we can communicate and build up trust in our community, achievement, accountability, it all follows. We can't have any of that if we're not all communicating with each other. If you guys don't <laughs> trust that what I'm doing up here is in your best interest, if, I, if I'm not really providing oversight to the superintendent, who has an incredible amount of power in, within our school district. It's a huge problem, and that is why we have a lot of people who choose to go elsewhere. They're not feeling heard. They're not feeling like they can trust us. They don't feel like we're dependable. But that's changing. And it feels really good to be a part of something that's growing, and it's got hope. And all I can say is that the very thing that's at my core is continuing on communicating with everyone, trying to reach out, trying to listen, even though it's tiresome sometimes. <laughs> Sucking it up, loving it, and I love living here, and I, at the end of the day, I, I, it's, there's nothing I could ask for more than that. Thank you. Keith Warnick. Well, throughout the years when I was on the board, uh, made sure that I attended a lot, of, an awful lot of events in the school district made sure that I was available to anybody who wanted to talk to me about uh, anything that was going on. Also, our committee structure that we had at that time allowed for community members to be involved <coughs> on a monthly basis in uh, helping move the decision-making process along for things that were going on in finance, program technology, and uh, our uh, bond uh, program, too. And also, I made sure that I visited all the schools every year, talked to the administrators, visited, talked to teachers to find out what was going on inside the classroom so that I could make a better decision based on what I felt was best for all students in this district uh, at the board table. <coughs> and even though I'm not on the board now, I've visited the schools this past year, too. Talked to the teachers, administrators, just to see what was going on and to see what their concerns might be. And those are the concerns that you take to the table each time, but we have to weigh that against, again, what you feel is in the best interest for the entire district. So 
So that's what I've done in the past, and again, that's what I'll continue to do uh, in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Karen Toomey. All right. So um, I was fortunate to be the chair of the Strategic Planning Committee, and I was very proud that when we set up that structure, we were very careful to make sure that it was as inclusive as possible. So we set it up first with focus meetings where people met one-on-one, -on -one, met with over 50 people that way. <laughs> then we opened it up to champions meetings, of hundreds and hundreds of people coming in. I think the next thing you can feel is the way the businesses are starting to be brought into this. You can feel that when we have a parade going down the street for homecoming. You can feel that with the Eagle Pride signs on everybody's lawns. And, you know, we have gold sponsors coming in for our athletics department. The FEF, the Ferndale Fo Educational Foundation membership, is impressive and well supported by our businesses as well. And I think that this is where we look at structure going forward. Because as a board, we are in charge of that policy and the structure of governance. And what we know is that democracy is the best form of accountability. And the structure that we had did not work. It did not work to stop a contract that had a conflict of interest in it. It did not work to stop the hundreds of thousands of dollars being bled from the operations department. And it did not work to stop the hundreds of thousands of dollars that weren't being spent appropriately with technology. We know it didn't work, and we know how to do it better. So you can see that we have already changed our structure. And what we are doing now is we are bringing the community in on those conversations earlier. It is unacceptable for the information and vetting process and voting to all occur at the same table on the same night. That is unacceptable, and it will happen no longer. Thank you. And lastly, we have Jennifer Latosh. Sure, thank you. Um, I've lived in the Ferndale area for 20 years now, which is hard to believe, but in that time I've met a lot of people and I've had a lot of different involvement. I was very active in the LGBTQ community for many years, and now being part of the school community, I have a lot of interaction and a lot of um, ability to talk to people about what's happening in our schools. And as I've been involved in that process, I'm out there, I'm volunteering at all the different schools, I'm talking to people, I receive phone calls, I receive emails, I receive texts, I talk to people and about, I had great conversations last night with people at the Coolidge um, Halloween fair when I was handing out desserts. Um, and one of the interesting things that I've done to bring that voice back and those conversations back to the board table is I had a very interesting evolution with the strategic planning process. I started out as a parent and as a community member going to the focus groups that was established by the board. I got to go out there and hear what people were saying. I had an opportunity to say what I was concerned about. And then I was truly honored when the board asked me to be part of the committee um, that put together the strategic plan. So when I was involved in that process, I remembered what was being talked about, and I remembered what I would talked about at home with my family, and that was that we need to really address our diversity, not just embrace it, but really bring forth what the problems that we have with race and with socioeconomics. We really had to talk about that, and I fought pretty hard to make sure that that was actually included in the strategic plan, and the word race appeared in the strategic plan. And after that process, when I actually was able to communicate and talk about those things, I was appointed to the board. And I've now been on the board, and I'm trying to implement, and I'm working towards implementing the strategic plan. And I still bring to the board table the need to address race and address socioeconomic disparity and really make sure that those are the forefront in what we're doing in regarding achievement. Thank you. Thank you. Our third question, we're going to begin with Keith Warnick. And I just want to add that if anyone needs a question repeated at any point, you can ask me. And I'll repeat it. <laughs> The question is, what is being done to appropriately staff after school events and drop off and pick up? Could resource officers be used? What is being done to What is being done to appropriately staff after school events and drop off and pick up? And then the second part is, could resource officers be used? I believe I saw that question on a Facebook posting. Apparently there's some, uh, there was an issue about the uh, um, after-school uh, program at Coolidge and some, I guess, fight that broke out. Uh, we have resource officers at our high school and our, and our digital learning center, um, not at the, 
uh, elementary or middle schools. I'm not sure that's a place for a resource officer right now, but I'm, there's policies in place with the school board, uh, administrators, and superintendent. They all work together to make sure that this doesn't happen in the future and uh, address the issue um, with the families and the parents at those schools. And that, to me, is what should be done first and go from there. That's why we have policies put in place. 9,000 policies? How many policies do we have? We have an awful lot of policies. Uh, it's a government entity. So we have a lot of policies. Uh, so that's where I start first, with the administration at the school, uh, superintendent, and, uh, and the parents of the students involved to make sure that that issue doesn't happen in the future. OK, thank you. Karen Toomey. All right. So, of course, <clears throat> safety is at the heart of everything we do in schools. I know that um, I was once in an Oakland schools meeting where they said, at the end of the day, if your parents don't feel safe sending their kids, it <laughs> doesn't even matter about academics. So safety is always going to be a top concern, and we're going to try to make sure to address that from a policy issue and from the training of the staff and the individuals within our organization. When it gets down to the issue of the after-school planning of staff, I'm going to admit that that's actually a management question. But where we step in is we make sure that the resources are there. And we do that through good budgeting. We need to make sure that our budget is sound. This board has done so much already to change the way we do that budgeting. Prior to now, we were building budgets around our most volatile programs. There is no reason why a brand new program that we're hoping and projecting to have 1,000 kids in it should be where we balance our budget. That's not sound and responsible. So by tightening up the strategies in our budget, that's the first place we can help. The other thing I want to talk about is when we built that strategic plan, we made certain that it was centered around climate and culture. And we have come in with very strong behavior plans. And that will ultimately affect the behavior of the students who are there after school. So through doing positive behavior interventions, through having restorative practices, we can improve that climate and the safety of our students. So we have to, as a board, ensure the climate and the resources. Thank you. Jennifer Latosh. Thank you. Um, regarding after school and drop off and pick up, that's a time that we need to make sure that all of our kids are safe and we all need to work together um, to ensure that that happens. We have strong liaisons with the various police departments that our schools sit in, in Ferndale and Pleasant Ridge and in Oak Park. And as part of our continuing efforts to increase collaboration, we want to try and increase and encourage an improvement in those relationships as well, so that we're working together to make sure that we all have a, a common goal um, and that we're working together with those, those common plans. Regarding the individual schools, I know that at uh, Kennedy there was an individual that was added to the, to, the, um, to the school, and that's an individual that sits right outside the front door to make sure that the kids are doing what they need to do and that the right people are coming in and out of the school. So that's one effort that was taken at that school to make sure. Um, we're working with traffic all the time regarding that. We were built as community schools. We weren't built as drop-off and pick-up schools. So we're really just trying to work with traffic patterns and work closely with our police departments on those as well. But to touch again on what Karen talked about, and that what we really need to do, and part of our strategic plan focused on that, was work on the culture and work on um, behavior, or behavior plans to make sure that we're encouraging positive behavior with our kids and that all our kids are being treated fairly, fairly and equitably so that we can make sure that they have they know what's expected of them, and they know what's going to happen if they break the rules. So by working on those things, we're trying to make sure that the, the dis discipline and the behavior plans are in line from kindergarten through 12th grade. So there, there's alignment all, all through that. So they learn it as kindergartners, and it just builds and builds and builds as they go through elementary school, middle school, and high school. So it's really working collaboratively with the district, with the, with the police departments, and then also building the, the, the change in the culture towards a positive nature. And that's what our administration has really worked hard to do the last three months. And I'm really excited to see where they're going to take it. Thank you. Thank you. And lastly, Nan Vermeule. Can you just repeat it one more time? I can. <laughs> that was my promise. <laughs> what is being done to appropriately staff after school events and drop off and pick up? Could resource officers be used? OK. All right, so first of all, the job of the school board is to 
we're in charge of the policies. So making sure that the policies are in place so that way our principals, our administrators can then work within those policies to make sure that all of our kids are safe, which is like everyone else at this table has said, it's really the most, it's super important, right? So after school programs are a management decision. I'm very proud of all of the work that all of our schools do to have after school programs because that does help with our culture um, and our climate in the school, creating that school family so that way uh, children, families, they all feel tied into that school. They have buy-in. They feel like they belong. That school means something to them. As far as using resources, I mean, I think that's something that would have to be looked at by the um, superintendent to decide how our resources are going to be used. If this is truly a safety concern, it does need to be looked at. Um, we are, we have just currently instilled a new behavior program that goes all the way pre-K through um, 12th grade. It's called PBIS, it's Positive Behavior Intervention System or something else. <laughs> but, um, so it just started, it's just being rolled out. The exciting part about this for me means we're going to have vertical alignment. It means that if a student, a five-year-old, learns about PBS when they're five years old, the same thing is going to apply to them when they're in 11th grade. It's clear expectations for kids, and kids are successful with clear expectations. The problem is that at a lot of our transitions, that's changing. That's what we're doing to change that. 